What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. Today is episode 210. Stefan Diggs is a Houston Texan. The Final Four is this weekend, but Bronny just hit the transfer portal, so I, that, that's the only thing we care about. Uh, the decision 2.0. I know none of you care, but I do. It is WrestleMania this weekend, and The Rock is the main villain, and this is the first WrestleMania I've watched since... Oh, 28? Uh, the All Rock right. versus Cena. Right. We were going to start with the NFL, but now the fact that you said that, I have to ask WWE questions. Like, just Well, the this admit- does kind of fit to the NFL. Because a little the, bit. I mean, shit, Roman Reigns was a captain. The Rock the also Tech played, played in, in the CFL the and on Miami. Like, I mean, it kind of worked. Do you know who the Rock's D-line coach was at Miami? I do not. It was uh, this guy by the name of Ed Orgeron. Not sure if you ever oh. heard of him. Oh, oh, no, no. The only and bit Coach that Ola I has know, a great the, the only, story when he would coach the Rock. The only uh, phenomenal bit stories. I should ask him next time I see him at practice. I'll just walk him and be like, yeah. "Hey, like, what was like, what was the Rock like?" <laughs> hey, like, I I know this is gonna be the most important thing you've ever been asked, but like, give me he's probably on you, the Rock you, you spin know, move. Uh, you like, know how what, good was his swim? You, you know what his response would probably be? He'd probably be like, "I've never been asked that question before." It's like, Thank you. <laughs> I, I <can laughs> this is the first time I've ever been asked that. The first time you, I've ever had somebody good ask that Coach question. O, and I, I, that would definitely make sense. You, you've been around Coach O. Uh, yeah, I have. I have been around. Interesting. It, very hard to understand him at certain points in time. I, I will yeah, say that. Yeah, that definitely checks out. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. Yeah, the only, the only thing I know about The Rock, just in general, by the way, about his football career is from, there's like a TV show about like Young Rock, like Young Sheldon, oh, but it's yeah. like Young Rock. And I've just seen clips. He's like, yeah, like, I played with Ray Lewis, uh, that guy, you know, Warren Sapp. Uh, he was on my team. It's like, oh, didn't know that. Didn't know The Rock was like homies like that with those guys. But all okay. right. Uh, okay. So, you know what? Jay, Pass you my tell questions. Me, what would you rather be? Ray Lewis? Well, you're about to go down to a deep, Maybe not deep the best rabbit hole. Uh, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> would you rather be, let me think, the least controversial, successful Miami? Uh, football player right now uh That's would a you very rather be... tough question Shit. uh who is Tim Tebow? Contra- he's not my he's florida oh fuck that is right he uh, is florida. I've, I'm, i was just thinking orange orange and could it be frank gore yeah could it be frank gore ed reed oh i think Ooh. ed reed did some ed stuff reed uh, I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe he did, but for, for the sake of, for the sake of our, of our, would you rather be the boy, rock or for, it, for the sake of our, of our, that went out of, to our the NFL of our water boy guess, Ed Reed has done nothing. All right. To our knowledge, Ed Reed has yes. done nothing. All right. To this day is still the coolest fact I've ever learned on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, did Brian Harline go to Miami? He played on the Dolphins with me. I don't know where he played college ball. Obviously went to Ohio state. Oh, he did. I didn't. I yeah. didn't know that. I know he played in. <laughs> I know he played for the Dolphins. I just didn't know where he went to play college. You forget uh, that, like I, I legitimately didn't know a lot of college football facts until like three years ago. Yeah, if I be honest, like if there's one niche piece of knowledge that I just know pretty well, it's where professional athletes went to college. I kind of know. I like. I know that now, at least for most Especially NFL in the guys. NBA. I'm. I know a lot of I'm NFL guys. At the NBA. Cause like you've asked yeah. me, you're like, where does this guy go to college? Right off, right off the fucking bat, I'm like, yeah, I know where that guy went to college. At least he's playing right now. Uh, uh, yeah, like I, uh, you know, I'm a little more college, college centric. Yeah, you're myself. a little bit more uh, college centric. But okay, you know, a little, little off topic there with Dwayne. You know but... what? That's that's good though. That's good. That's good. We, we're okay with that. We're okay with that. Um, I mean, he's putting in work right now. Putting in work as a heel. So, <laughs> see, I didn't even know what that meant until like. Oh, I did not know until had zero idea what that way meant. after I was watching wrestling when I was in like third grade. Way like after literally the only it. reason I know what that is is because The Rock literally tweeted, I turned heel and that's what it means. Like, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I used to grow up being like, yeah, no, I, I hate the, the bad guys. They all suck. It's like, no, like that's the point. They're the only reason you watch <laughs> like they're without, without the bad guy. You don't you don't care at all. Uh, So, yeah. Um, Dwayne, you know, all right. So with, with you know what? Stefan Diggs trades the big news of the day today, right? I mean, obviously, we'll talk about that a little bit, but there's two things I want to look at, Grant, when it comes when it comes to this, okay? There was a tweet directly before with Stefan Diggs yeah. when somebody was like, you know, 
Josh Allen doesn't need a wide receiver, like a, an elite wide receiver to be elite, right? And, jo- and, and Stefan Diggs was like, oh, really? So here's my question to you. If you're to start an offense with a wide receiver, let's say you have a shitty, like Sam Darnold's your starting quarterback, okay? Uh-huh. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. What wide receiver would you want to start with him? And do you think that actually Probably Justin like Jefferson. Impact? Oh, yeah, Probably yeah, Justin you know, kind of. <laughs> do you, but do you, think, do you think that having an elite, like for the Texans offense, do you think Stefan Diggs is going to make that much of a difference going into this season? than it would well, just with Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Because I honestly don't... Like, yeah, it's, it, it, statistically, in the way that it looks on paper, is disgusting. But mm. I don't really know how much of a difference it makes outside of just... Ma- like, if you're a corner, you're just like, well, shit. Like, I, wh- who the fuck are we defending? Right? But, like, I, I don't really know how much of a difference it's gonna make. Like, so, let's just talk all on-field, no off-field things here uh that's that's bold that's bold and we're uh we're gonna the locker room is bold. second we're gonna touch into the locker room a second because i i would argue that free uh, step on digs houston on, texans are out. top grant, three cam. grant we let's embrace debate we're gonna come back embrace debate who is more of a locker room cancer burnt uh, toast is, eli apple or step on digs we had a third name in here there's a third name. I'm asking, can we add a third name in here? Because I mean, is that third name going to be your immediate answer? Nah, forget the third name. You Them can't two. put a third name. Uh, yeah. I think we can agree. These are the locker room wise, the two most controversial athletes in the NFL today. Currently in the NFL. Yeah. So otherwise I've been, reports, I was then like, also oh God, put Antonio Brown in there as well. That would be the yeah, third he, athlete. Not current, not active. He's Eli not Apple's current. on a team, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Right. I think he's on the Dolphins right now. Uh, I'll, Stare. I'll. St- w- for the Check sake of this, quick. he's on a team. For the sake of this, he's on a team. I, I think because Stefan Diggs is a much better wide receiver than Eli Apple is a corner, that it's Eli Apple. Only negative things can be brought up by Eli Apple. What, it, what you're insinuating? That's yeah, what like, you're saying. At least with Stefan Diggs and other diva wide receivers. You can put up with some of the bullshit when they are doing phenomenal, amazing things. And real quick, expect. I'm I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna Eli check Apple, Stephon though? Diggs stats down the stretch here. That you keep you can keep going. I'm, I'm, I, I'm I just want to say, out. as an Ohio State fan, um, I know we give a lot of shit to Urban Meyer, but Everett, is there anything more impressive than convincing NFL GMs that Eli Apple? is worth the number 10 pick in the NFL draft. I literally think that's the number one bullet point he should put on his resume. I'm going to be honest. I, I completely forgot that. I completely Apple forgot that he went to pick. Ohio State. I completely forgot that. Oh, yeah, he did. And I'm telling you right now. When we can throw Dame and Arnett State, into, uh, wow. into the, the conversation. All right. Uh, <laughs> Dame and Arnett. Hey, 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 hey. I do not. I do not condone any of the actions. Look, all, all I'm going to say though is down the stretch, Stefan had zero. I guess that's the that's that's the Pro Bowl. He had three receptions, well, eight targets. Backs, I think we were talking about. He had 21 yards versus the Chiefs. He had 52 versus the Steelers, and down the stretch, uh, multiple sub 50 yard games. So this is what I I, I noticed the other day. Stefan Diggs has had a lot. A lot of issues with Joe Brady. Now, Joe Brady's a name that we've been hyping up a lot on this show, but Ste- Stefan apparently pointed to him as like one of the main reasons why he wants out of Buffalo. And keep in mind, Buffalo just ate up $30 million in dead cap to get rid of Stefan Diggs. You got like, keep that in mind. They were like, they did not see the value. And Stefan Diggs. No, like, and Josh Allen didn't their know that like Stefan was getting traded until after the trade happened, too. Yeah, I mean, that's shit. the other thing. Is 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 Josh still um in, in like London and stuff, or did he get back? Do we know? Like, is he just he was in London out of the before? Because it'd be remember when that thing came out, like him and Haley Steinfeld. What did he is do? This when he ripped like, his pants. Yes, when he ripped his. That pants. That was like a month ago. I thought. I'm just I'm just wondering if Josh is out of the loop right now. Okay, like I'm not sure if he gets to quite be the Aaron Rodgers figure uh, in the GM room. Uh, so uh, I, I kind of feel bad a little bit for Josh here. But let's just look at 
Joe Brady, okay? In 2020, when Joe Brady was the Panthers pass game coordinator's first year, DJ Moore finished behind Chosen Anderson at the time, Robbie, and Curtis Samuel in PPR. I'm not really looking at that that hard, but that just shocked me hearing that. Uh, 2023, though, free Brady win uh, the GOAT. Uh, Dorsey was at OC with the famous freakout. Free Brady with Dorsey there. Diggs averaged 86.8 yards per game. After Dorsey left and Brady was at OC, Diggs averaged 45 yards per game. And as, as a Stefan Diggs dynasty owner myself, let me, let me say. Wait a I, second. I you don't own Stefan anymore. You don't have him but anymore. For, former. Trade him for a first, baby. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. But I do think that Joe Brady may, maybe was slightly overvalued coming out of LSU. And I mean, maybe yeah, for a good little reason, bit. Because he was, had the greatest offense in the history. Yeah, I mean, but literally. The, the, to be fair, though, him. once but, once he took over uh, for Ken Dorsey, I mean, they had. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. Didn't the run game significantly improve? With significantly improved. They had a one, two, three, they were still four, five in yards per game. They had a they had a stretch of games where they went six and one. They're only lost at Philadelphia, 37-34, I believe, on a push tush or tush push in uh, overtime. Um, so Stefan Diggs, he was specifically pointing out that Joe Brady lacks the ability to scheme wide receivers real quick open. grant that was just, his complaint. just looking at the bills uh win loss from this last year not say i mean obviously they just got absolutely disintegrated their team doesn't exist anymore but every single one of their losses were in one score games every single one of them their first loss versus the jaguars they lose uh 20 to 25 their loss versus new england they lose 25 29 their loss versus Cincinnati, they lose 18 to 24 and their loss versus Denver, they lose 22 to 24. Their loss versus Philly, they lose 34 37. And their loss versus Kansas City, they lose 24 27. Yeah, I'm just looking at their very winnable games. Loss margin on the season three. Like it, it is what nobody is talking about the fact that it's wild to say the Bills were this close, this close to going undefeated last year. Like that is what's wild to me. And having all this stuff happen in the postseason, like the, that's. That's just crazy. That's crazy. I mean, in their seven losses, they lost by a margin of 29 points, averaging around like four points per loss. One, like one touchdown. Like that, that, that That's I feel like crazy. is very, very low. Very low. Like that does make me think though, like because of that, and you're in such close games all the time and you have Josh Allen at worst, in my opinion. I thought, I thought I'm I was dumb. second I'm best be quarterback honest, in the I, NFL. I thought I was going to have a crazy stat line where Stefan Diggs got a touchdown in every one of their losses, but he missed it by two games. That'd be funny. He, that would he be has, he has a touchdown. The only touchdowns, he has a total of uh, four touchdowns last catch year. Many last year. Yeah. He has four touchdowns. The first came in the Jaguars loss. The second came in the Pats loss. The third came in the bill, uh, the, the Bengals loss. Didn't get one versus Denver, but then got one versus Philly in that loss. And then didn't get one versus Kansas city. Would have been wild if that was the case. I mean, th- that would have been real funny. Well, okay. So also, but but that is saying that is saying he never got goals. one. He never got a touchdown pass in any of the wins that they got. Not a yeah. single win. No, yeah. Not a single win. When you factor in all those things, okay, you also consider their margin of loss. Uh, all this included. There was a viral tweet going around this morning from one very own Nikki Smokes, the man who got hired to Barcelona, making a bet with Dave Portnoy on the Dolphins Patriots game. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. He went out this morning and said, it's official. The Buffalo bills championship window has closed after trading Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Did I'm pretty sure that was, that was his not? blog post. Right. Yeah. And, yes. and Portnoy was not too happy about that. I saw that tweet. Do you, do you agree with that or not? I, I do think, well, it depends who they draft. Like, here's the thing. They could get a wide receiver. They, like Brian Thomas can end up being a wide. Like you have to remember, <laughs> when the Vikings traded Stefan Diggs, right? Yeah, you guys drafted Justin Jefferson that year? We right? drafted Justin Jefferson, pick 23. And like you Vikings can't discount. Okay move there. And also at that draft, they had CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy was t- like, there were all these other wide receivers that were touted to be, you know, great. And obviously, CeeDee Lamb is fantastic, right? Justin Jefferson's great. But uh, Jalen Rieger is not. Just don't, just don't get a Jalen Rieger. That's really all that needs to be asked for. But the, the, the bigger thing is, 
they can replace these wide receivers. It's a really great. If you're going to lose your wide receiver one in any any draft, it's this is the draft to do it. And on top of that, remember, Brandon oh, yeah. Ayuk is up for trade. C, uh, T. Higgins is up for trade. Like, you know, it's possible yeah, that I mean, they we get, were floating it around earlier that shit. That they get Chargers, moved. you're to tell me, hey, do you, do you want Ayuk and, you know, trade down and we can make that work? Like, okay, now, you're, now you got me back in on the OT first round. Now, now I'm back in. Back in now. So, I, those are moves gonna, that I was not considering. The next, you could see, hey, look, the, the draft is in, I think, 23 days. Over the next 20-ish days, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. A lot of teams have time, all right? They have time to see what's happening. But, like, also, last year, let's look at the run of wide receivers last year. Obviously, this class is considered a little bit more stacked. wide receiver class but absurd. But last Holy year, shit. the wide receiver run was like 19 to 24, those picks. And remember where the Bills are picking this year. Like, there's going to be receivers that they can draft. Um, oh, yeah, 100%. 100% there's it is ironic, though, Grant, that the pick that got the Texans, Stefan Diggs, was the Vikings' second-round pick. So essentially, the trade, by the way, the trade... We're all, we're all connected back, back to where it all started. They all the, the trade, the, the Stefan Diggs Vikings trade effectively became Stefan Diggs to the Texans. Yep. Right? Vikings give up a second, get a first, give up Stefan Diggs. The Bills don't get any Super Bowls, go like 40 and 28 and give up a fifth and a sixth pick and a first. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking like what Vikings was the best second. moment that the Bills had with Stefan Diggs? Stefan uh, Diggs standing there standing after the loss after the, and yeah. watching the confetti fall yeah, for the Chiefs. That yeah, was yeah. my yeah. first thought. Although I will say two years ago in the, the they did get screwed. They I mean they got boned. <laughs> they, they, two two years yeah, ago though shit. in the regular season game they versus did what they us. Had to do two years ago. The, in two years ago, the regular season game versus us, that was like the game of the year. Stefan oh, had yeah. an incredible catch that game too. But with that, overshadowed with, by Justin Jefferson. Yes, that, so, you know, so, as expected. I don't now, Vikings know what won that catch trade hands talking down. About. I literally don't even know what catch you're talking about right now. <laughs> hey, I, I, I was no sitting there, I'm like, that was disgusting. I tweeted that out. Like, That's, <laughs> that was gross. Um, yeah, I mean, but, I'll look, just say, like, I know how much Stefan means to you. So. Let's look at this. I know you have you have top 10 offenses, but we're going to, you're doing that in your own post. With I, this, I will say it for today. No, right? it's okay because that's yeah, that's your own post. You got to go to TikTok to check that out. All right, that's our shout out. But <laughs> with that, with this trade for Stefan Diggs, Grant, what are the best wide receiver cores in the NFL right now? Honestly exactly. speaking, the Texans might be number one, like our number We're one. Right three now. deep here. All three right. deep. Like We're I'm not not my here. bullshit. I did last year, where I'm like, yeah, well, technically three the deep. Jets have like depth, so you know we gotta gotta three no three deep. 3 deep. Let's look at the top three wide receivers. Three deep. One to ten. Right? And who's, who's I'll be matters? honest, tight ends count for certain teams. Or no. Mm, Just uh, looking like pass catching cores or like let's do wide receivers. Cause then if you get in the 49ers, you're kind of CMC and it gets kind of weird. So because I was gonna say, like, bro, Vikings, you guys are definitely like top four, top fives with Hawk, J A, and J Jet. Yeah, I think for the sake of things. Okay, tight end up. Let's just do wide receivers, all right? We're going three deep, though, okay? So, three deep. shit. Like, that third guy matters a lot in these ratings. So, I do think, right now, off of day one, Texans number one. I would I would say, yeah, Texans Diggs, are Collins, number Tank, one. Collins, Tank, Dell, all three of those guys are guys that give a DC fit. All three of those guys are dudes you need to game plan for. And guess what? One of them is going to be one on one in man. So you pick who you want to leave open. It's definitely going to be Tank Dell, and he's <laughs> going to torture ass. So enjoy. I would say, okay, I would agree with that. I Number guess, two, uh, I know it's going to be a lot of cover two this year. All right. You're going to be fucking double bracketing the fuck out of these boys, and Tank Dell run loose. See, the thing is, like, a lot of it's these going teams... to be 2020, 2022 Ohio State offense. A Garrett lot of these and Olave teams out wide JSN in the slot third down who received over 50% of CJ Stroud's targets on third down in 2022 Jackson Smith and Jigba in the slot. That's going to be tank though. A lot tank of these teams PPR God. don't have like that bona fide wide receiver three, especially I'm talking in, three. Yeah. Especially not like what 
the uh, Texans have Nobody now. Nobody has that. Uh-uh. Two. Bears, this is the thing. Like, Keenan, DJ Moore, I love. Who is their three? Tyler Scott right now. Unless they get Odunze. And if they get Odunze. Yeah, things can change. Things that can goes change. up. That goes up. Um, but, I who's, mean, if- who's the Falcons? Oh, the Fal- Falcons might be number two. They have, it's, London. it's Drake London, Darnell Mooney, Rondell Moore. I like that. I like that. I I'm a fan of that. Put them at. Two. I would put that at two. I put that at two. I, we're we're flown them up there for sure. Uh, at, at they're they're in contention like, there. Uh, I put Seahawks up there. DK Lockett, JSN. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm not saying I'd top five necessarily. They're in the top ten. We'll see where to throw them exactly. I mean, I, I mean, I Ooh, I'd still Browns, put them high. Amari, Judy, and Elijah Moore. Yeah, minus the fact Elijah Moore sucks, but yes, yes. Like I, I'm thinking Tampa Bay Bucks right here. Mike Evans, Godwin, is the three. Russell Gage. He, yeah, he'll be back next. He'll year. be back. He's off he'll an ACL, back. correct? I don't know. I could not answer that for you. If I remember correctly, I remember some tweet. There was some. Like, I think name account calling out. The Falcons being like, "Wow, way to not use Russell Gage." And then Titans, Russell Gage like, "Hey, Titans, by the way, I'm out for the year, dude." Titans sneaky with uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin oh. Ridley. No, that's Traylon Burks. Very... Traylon sucks. So that's another problem. A... Yeah, I it, it takes them down I a little think, bit. I think, but Traylon Burks is definitely better than the average wide receiver three. Uh maybe not definitely. Yeah, not definitely. Not that's just, that's a bold statement. Hey, that's a bold reference, statement. The, the Chargers wide receiver three right now. Um, I don't think you have think. three wide receivers. Let on me the think. Roster. Who I think it might be you. Think. You might be the wide receiver three for the Chargers. I, right I think it Loki might be Jim Harbaugh when he throws the gloves on and catches for the quarterback. <laughs> that that honestly might be true. Yeah, no, it's it's hey, it's currently it's Max quick, Duggan. Um, quick quick side note because I know nobody gives a shit about the Chargers, but. They asked Harbaugh this morning, like, what do you think of your wide receiver room? And he goes, Yeah, yeah, you know, it's um it it is a room. You, you know, I'm looking at all position group, like deflected so fast. Like you know what would have been so funny hard. Is, you know what would have been really funny if they're like, so what do you think of your wide receiver room? He's like, Yeah, I mean, like in the building, it's, it's Johnson. It's, it's, no, he's like, he's wait, like, wait, he beat me in college? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, if, if you just started talking, he's like, yeah, so I mean, like, in the building, it's got four walls, there's a projector in there. Like, you just start talking about, like, the literal room. Basic things. <laughs> yeah, not not even not even the like, players, he's just talking yeah, about yeah, the no, literal just, meeting like, room. Yeah, we got, like, like uh, I think, like, four sets of tables in there. There's, you know, like, got, some, there's got a cooler more than with waters seats. in there uh, <laughs> if you need something to drink. Like, there's four chairs. Yeah, uh, like, I, I make sure to uh, keep all the uh, Nature Valley bars in there and make sure they're fully stocked in the mornings. Uh, yeah, unlike the Cardinals, some, who you have to actually pay to do that. Too, you, know, I know you, like have, that. you have to pay if you're the Cardinals for that. So, hey, it's a big, I still it's a big ask. I still it's a big can't ask. get over that. Like, by <laughs> making the players pay for their shit, you are discouraging. It literally, them the moment I heard that reminded me in the scene of Moneyball where they're like, "You have to pay for the vending machine, like to get drinks in here." Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's such yeah. a great scene. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm just like shit. Like, I don't know many, many like D1 college programs that are charging their players knickknack for like a little bar or like a water. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I could honestly I couldn't exactly tell know, you. But, I couldn't tell you. But I'm not sure how many but, are, are like yeah, that. So. I, I mean, let, let, let just just with the, these wide receiver groups, I mean, uh, uh, 49ers the will Bengals be in there. wide receiver three? I don't know Trenton right now. Irwin? I think it might be uh, Io Sivas, whatever his name is. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, I mean, look, we, we have well, the Dolphins shit. will be in there. Dolphins 49ers will be in there. Uh, Falcons are in there. Texans are in there. Uh, Unfortunately, I feel like the only way to actually make this a good rounds are in there. Open it up to tight ends. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I oh. think we're realizing that not many teams have good wide receivers. Slowly, I think that's slowly, the message. slowly realizing that. Yeah, slowly, uh, but not slowly. We 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 realize that. Eagle is Julio Jones still the Eagles wide receiver three? No, it's Devonte Parker. 
You oh, forgot he existed, I right? I totally forgot he existed. One Holy of the shit. worst route separations of all time, by the oh, way. Like statistically I did see that. horrific. I did see that recently. Literally, yeah, like that's... I think bottom three all time, dating back to like 1953. Uh, how about Packers? Ne- not necessarily the star. I'm, I'm gonna power be honest. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I, it, there's so many unknowns there. Like they're all so okay. young. Okay. I have zero idea. That could either next year they could either be fantastic or it could be. Like, are they what right now? Watson, uh, Dobbs. I'm gonna be uh, like, if it, if it was Reed. me, I think I think Jaden Reed's technically wide receiver one right now. Christian Watson, it's I, I low heard key. Jane Reed's like their favorite. Christian Watson's favorite. low key a bust right now. Like, I people, they're they're. I mean, U.S. Packer fans, most of them will probably be like, yeah, no, he's like really good. He's ass. He is ass. Like <laughs> ass. Like I would. He's a good wide receiver three. I don't. I don't know if I'd have him one or two, but like. I know people are hyping up Don honest, Tavion I'm Wicks. Don Tavion Wicks down the stretch were, was fantastic. Uh, Jaden Reed was great. Obviously, Romeo Dubes was great. Um, is it, Christian Watson. Is it Dobbs? How do you pronounce Dobbs. it? I've heard I everything. Think Dobbs. I think it's Dobbs. Dubes, Dobbs, whatever. Same thing. Same difference. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, like, if it was me, based on the numbers that I was seeing, like, I think Don Tavion Wicks and, and um, Jaden Reed are going to be those – kind of guys but it's kind of just spread around every like they had like the most case, yeah they had the most receptions by like players throughout the whole offense last year like everybody got a piece. oh <clears throat> yeah i think that Ooh, actually yeah i think I, I think i can give some explanation for that just because they had so many unknowns like aaron jones yeah injury. and but, like even their tight ends with Kraft and musgrave like they, they also got in there to your point there, though, one thing that like I, I look at when I think of wide receiver dominance and impact to an offense, like one thing I look at is first down to target or targets to first down ratios. How many first downs are you converting on your targets? In my opinion, that shows confidence in a quarterback to trust that guy and throw him the ball to pick up first downs. At the end of the day, Football is about getting first downs, okay? Like, yeah. that is how you... That, that and is what and touchdowns, is. that's important, but yeah. Of course, of course. But before you can get that touchdown, get the fucking first down, all right? And last year, okay, Jaden Reed, 32 first downs on 94 targets. Romeo Dobbs, 41 first downs on 96 targets. Dontavian Wicks, 29 first downs on 58 targets. That is elite percentage right there. That is elite shit right there. Dante and uh, for, for the that. one individual that's in our fantasy, in our dynasty league, who's trying to get me to trade him, Dontavian Wicks, for crack, like for crackers, for pennies on the dollar, case in point. Case in point. Saying, I'm looking at looking you, Zach. This, that what this chart literally reads, uh, on half of Dontavian Wicks' targets, he gets a first down. Okay? No, I'm yeah. not sure if you can find a more trustworthy stat showing how Adam Thielen in that 20 player is. Adam Thielen in 2020 2021 I am just saying that ratio no of yes how yes. targets for like that yes. shows how important and critical you are to your offense and Dontavian Wicks is off the charts 50% of his targets are first downs that's absurd horrifies me as a Vikings fan hype for me as a dynasty owner so yeah, I, like, I will take I, that the other thing i mean shit we'll make this very quick but Justin Jefferson, the thing that blows my mind about him and uh, like immediately pops off the page when I look at his stats, it's his target to first down ratio. Like, uh, shit, uh, we could even do last year. 100 targets, 51 first downs. Year before, 184 targets, 80 first downs. 80 first downs. That is so much. <laughs> and then year before... 167 targets, 75 first downs. So, yeah, no, I mean, last year it also it also goes to show you though, like there is in certain capacities not a major difference between wide receivers drafted really early and late. Like it is full. Like that's that's what goes to show you where like you don't need to get a wide receiver in the first round to be elite. And obviously, Justin Jefferson is completely different, but like. Having that value from Dontavian Wicks compared to what it is for Justin Jefferson, like that's still crazy. Yeah, like I'm just looking at 
the first down leaders from last year. And if I'm going to, if I'm going to shout out best ratio is Jay Jettas. Uh, that's just, yes, he had the best ratio. I mean, Other, that makes sense though. Yeah, no, it makes complete sense. Other really high, crazy ratio ever that you're going to love. Uh, guess which wide receiver had 53 first downs on 109 targets, uh, and you would care about him. Is it, is it just this past season? Yeah, just for last year. Jordan Addison. Nico Call. Fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, oh, God, you know one thing? Digs. One th- Damn, y- the Chargers just got called out by Sleeper NFL on Twitter. Um, what do we do? What do we do? Yo, at Chargers. See what the Texans are doing for CJ Stroud? Take notes. It's tough. I I can't. I'm not disagreeing with that. That's tough. Um, I I can't disagree with it. But but my one thing that I saw about Nico Collins, somebody said this, and I didn't realize it, but most of Nico Collins, like, great performances can't. Like, he was good. He He was serviceable. He was good. He was good when Tank Dell was on the field. But his elite performances came when when Tank Dell was off the field. So he was just getting fed the ball. And that was one thing I didn't really recognize, but it does does make sense now. And that when he was like the wide receiver nine or whatever, like that's one thing to take into account with those. Is like if somebody's right, when both out, on the field, was Tank Dell better? I think Tank Dell did perform more consistently. I think he was like the technical number one choice. This is how I choice. view that. Like, and I'm literally coming from the wide receiver room at Ohio State and how I see defenses prepare for them. Like, in my opinion, when you add passing weapons to an offense, that helps everyone. I think that helps everyone. I, like, maybe not stat-wise, but those players are going to be better with other weapons on the field that defenses have to care about. But... For Nikon's tank out, shit. I Stefan Diggs is going to be the main focus, of course. But I'm going to be interested to see though. Will how that really open Nico up, or is now Tank Dell going? But to the, also, the one thing that you're forgetting here, the one piece and all, Dalton Schultz is on that team. He just got a contract extension. Oh yeah, I think yeah, that was very. And I thought Dalton Schultz was an amazing, amazing pickup to help CJ out his rookie year. Yeah. Now he has a tank tail and Nico Collins. So it know, is just interesting to me though. Uh, like to me, like it, it is interesting how the Texans basically like they've had this. They have a really young wide receiver core, whatever that's very good and has very good upside. But now they go and add Stefan Diggs, who's an older guy. Like I don't necessarily understand that aspect. Because to me, what this tells me is like, obviously everybody's always competing with this rule, but this is like, they're like, this year, year two of step CJ, this is the year we're going in for it. And, and like, especially they're after not, winning a playoff they're game, not now going, their expectations They're not going high. all in because like, they're not trading all their draft picks away. They're not doing yeah. like all these crazy things. They still have picks, but just they're this competing move. And they are trying to build. This move is it's interesting, it's especially for the fact I think Stefan Diggs, I don't think he has a contract. Center. I think he's he's on one year. I think there's one year remaining. Yes. So that's I'll, just I'll what's check, interesting but... to me. I, like that's, yeah, I don't know. Plus, I mean, they're yes, only paying I'm... him in like 19, I think. So that, yeah, it makes sense. It, it is just, Diggs, it's just what's curious to me. Stefan Diggs signed a four-year $96 million extension in April 2022. So two years uh, left. Stefan Diggs. Well, he signed that. That went into effect. This season. Oh, so he's still... he's he is under contract till 2027 in Houston. I did not realize that. I'm gonna be honest. Be this is the thing old. that this is what Buffalo like doesn't they, they, they keep doing this. It doesn't make sense. They, they give contract long term contracts to guys who are like 32. Who are like by the time the contract the expires, Miller shit. It, well, it's like by the time the contract expires, they're gonna be like thirty-eight, and there's no way a wide receiver or or an outside linebacker edge rusher is playing until they're thirty-eight years old. They're not Tom Brady. They get hit more. They have to be more athletic. Like that's what I don't understand. I don't know what the Texans are gonna do with Stefan for that many years, paying him that amount of money. It doesn't really make sense to me for that. Yeah, I because <clears throat> why just look at like shit over the next four years, shit. 
in three years, 2026, they're going to have to re-sign Coleridge and Will Anderson, who are going to be worth a... And Tank is going to be the year before that. Yeah, Tank, Nico, like, all Nico's these guys... two years they before that. Yeah, like, obviously, of course, CJ is going to stay there forever, but it's like, they're going to... I mean, CJ Stroud's contract, Everett. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what that's going to be. But, man, I'm happy for him. Holy fuck, that just, that just <laughs> sunk in. He's about to be the first the first 60 per season quarterback. I mean, yeah. you don't know. We don't know. There's, there's a lot of time between now Burrow's and then. at, what, 56 now? Yeah, with a contract extension coming up. Oh, like, I'm telling up. you. They're going over 60 yeah. by the time he signs in four like years. Like, next, next year's crop of, Might of be hitting or, like, Brock Purdy is going to get paid, like, 62. Who is next year's crop? It's like, Herbert... Bro, they're all through. They just got theirs. It could um, be. Is it T Law? Is that the next bet? Oh, yeah. T Law, like Tua. T Law. Wait, Tua just got his. No. When, yeah, it is. It's T Law, Wilson, Trey Lance, and Fields. Because they're, they're in their last year right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they have a fifth year option about after this of a year. Draft but yeah. Class that I thought was going to be amazing, but. <sighs> Things happen. Okay. All actually, those teams squander those opportunities, though. To be we fair. we were like quickly diverted away and, and didn't quite look at it, but uh, when we got into the who's a bigger diva debate, but <laughs> I'm just let's just look at the Houston Texans org pre and post Stefan Diggs. Like before Stefan, I would say that from a team chemistry perspective, they they were top three in the NFL. Like I was like, holy shit! Like they seemed like they love each other. And they are all built in on like a new D'Amico Ryan's culture and structure. And like, they are their own football team. Like, I know he's a diva. You, you would know. But what are the chances that Stefan Diggs could harm this team because of potential chemistry issues? Like, from that angle only. I, I'm going to be honest, though. Like, if, I I'm, if, I'm, if I am the Texans organization right now, and I'm aware of these issues Stefan's had, I've seen the... Or who would you not want to let date your your sister, your daughter? And everybody says Stefan, right? I've I seen that. that. I've heard the shit in Buffalo, much. right? I know what happened on his way out of Minnesota. If I'm the Texans right now, if if I hear one inch, one ounce of, yeah, Stefan's fucking up the locker room right, right, right now, his ass is gone. See you later. We're good. Didn't give you that up that much to get you. Whatever, right? That's my mentality. And if I'm Stefan Diggs, right, I am happy and excited to now be playing with a young quarterback yeah. in an elite offense. I'm hoping to be cared for. But at the same time, I'm, I don't think I, – I know Stefan doesn't think this way. Stefan's not going to give a fuck. But Are you hearing that? Is that fire, fire alarms right now? There's a loud, loud it's so loud alert. it's not getting picked up right now. But, if, yeah. but I'm more so – I'm like not necessarily walking on eggshells, but I'm like I cannot fuck this up. I that is – They are walking on eggshells because they had something going great. And like – I'm saying Stefan walking on eggshells. Not the oh, team. Oh, Stefan oh, oh, himself oh, oh, oh. walking on eggshells. Like I, I think there's just – Stefan digs. I just think like D'Amico Ryans compared to, to Sean McDermott, complete different vibe right one guy one guy had issues with terrorist actions the other one very chill so there's a big, well, big was difference. it issues or was the issue stem from his um slight support of those actions or i was trying to find some... the proper way to not get canceled by saying it but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll say support um so I, there's a big culture difference, and maybe with that, like D'Amico, I mean, even with Mike Zimmer, there's a huge culture difference there, right? So maybe there's going to be a, a difference in the way that Stefan is approached and the way that he interacts in the locker room, and D'Amico is going to kind of be more of that guy, right? But I do yeah. think that there's going to be a shorter leash with it because of that fact, specifically because D'Amico's more kind of like chill and, and you know, we'll let you – get away with a little bit more or whatever like you know they want you they want to have that camaraderie but if you start dicking around and you're like doing the shit that stefan's been known to do over the last couple of years that's going to be a problem yeah i was seeing a couple of uh joke posts like stefan digs after the first play of the year when nico goes to nico gets targeted yeah. and it's antonio brown uh like i i feel like at this point like stefan just wants to be in a place where he is like 
appreciated maybe. I, I do I do want to be honest though. Like if I'm Stefan, like at this point in time, he no wide receiver is ever gonna be like, I am coming in to be the wide receiver three. You're always I am the wide so receiver yeah. one, yeah. especially if you're Stefan Diggs or a top wide receiver, you're like, I am the wide receiver one. But if you're coming into a situation where take Dell is absolutely was absolutely gross when he was playing. Nico Collins is like, you're coming in that situation. You have to understand like the targets are not going to, you're not just going to be solely fed. Like Stefan wanted to leave Minnesota and go to Buffalo because he wanted to be the dominant wide receiver yeah. one. He was the dominant wide receiver one. And now he's wanting to leave Buffalo. Didn't like it because he wasn't getting fed. Going to the Texans is not so going he's to just Kyrie Irving is what you're kind of telling yeah, but like me also right going now. going to the Texans you're not going to be dominantly fed over anybody else especially not when you have Tank Dell, Nico Collins, and Dalton Schultz on the team like that that I, I I don't you know better than I do when C.J. Stroud was at Ohio State did he spread the ball around evenly or did he specifically target one wide receiver? I, I'm gonna be honest. That shit was just so unbelievably spread out. I will say, though, there are downs. One man did get preferential treatment, and it was the slot guy. But, like, yeah, I, I was, but But here's the I, thing, yes. though. Like, this is what plays into to, – you know, at Ohio State, uh, C.J. Stroud essentially had the most elite wide yes. receiver core in college yeah, football. He did. Now Mark you compare that to the NFL like where we can – for this, for this, we'll say he has the most elite wide receiver core in the NFL right now. We're, we'll just say that for, for this segment, say, right, for the state. I, I, think it's, I think it's true, though. If that's what he did in yeah. college with that, it's going to apply to the NFL. And Well, we're but, gonna... but oh and 2 against Michigan, so he's a bum, right? I've seen way too many of those recently. But like, oh my god, I I'll never get over that. How did we? How did we never beat them? CJ, AJ McCarthy, man, dude. The first time it was fucking little Cade McNamara, like. But I, it's that's what I'm just like like I I'm. It's gonna be interesting to see if Stefan actually kind of be is a little bit more tame and quiet, like. Like Odell, he realized people were stop weren't gonna pay him oh, because he was he, being a diva. He cut that shit out. And he last stopped doing it, and the Baltimore team was better. Places. Yeah, and the team was better. Like the so, most run heavy offense in the league. Yeah, but the the team was better. The wide receiver, like you didn't, we didn't hear any of that. So it's it's just gonna that's gonna be interesting. That's I'll gonna be, be honest. I just I'm just looking through uh, NFL stats, and I sam howell just has a seattle seahawk logo next to his name i was like what the fuck am i looking at uh but yeah <laughs> we'll see i mean gino smith's probably gonna be here this year i'm not praying for injuries but but he has Gino's gonna like be the starter like they did pay him but it's like bro like i'm out on Gino. <laughs> like yeah and he's your quarterback isn't he Oh yeah, he is. That's that's kind of why i'm out on it because i yeah no I grant's grant's him. quarterback situation going from Looking fantastic last off season to looking absolutely disastrous this off season. Grant needs I mean, a quarter. The verdict is still relatively out on Trevor Lawrence. Just feel like Trevor Lawrence has a heavy fucking. But but the fact of the matter last out. year last year entering the season, everyone was like Justin oh. Fields, like maybe MVP, like he he could win you your fantasy league, and you had Geno Smith, and you're like this is great, like. My quarterbacks are set. I'm good. 100. I mean, the this off season, thing you I don't know if you have a quarterback was... to start for next year. I don't, yeah, I like, I, I literally don't know. I know, I know Justin's not going to start to like at minimum week three at, at minimum. And I still, I don't think he'll start that early. So like. What yeah. would you give me for Anthony Richardson right now? Dog, if I were you, that man is criminally undervalued on what he can be right now because of injury and untouchable just because of the value. I mean, that's, if that's I, untouchable you know our our uh our guest our our reoccurring guest chadwick uh odell bailey saw him Does earlier today anthony saw him earlier today Mr. We, were, we were making some negotiations for some players uh and for he was Mr. like anthony? you know you know i i need a quarterback and i'm like i mean i'll give you sam howell for whatever he's like no like what about what about ar i'm like dude like i need anthony richardson to compete he didn't even suggest cj he he knows better than cj but he was like he was like what about i'm like bro i need anthony richardson to compete he's like I mean, I can give you like Russ or something I'm like, dude, I I would rather just not play in the league if you're going to give me Russ for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, you know, 
Dynasty is so niche, not everyone cares. But in terms of Dynasty rankings, I think they're a relatively solid measurement of just longevity uh, projections and how sustainable your career can be. And like seeing CJ literally double in value by week four last year. Oh, wow. L- like, wow. Like, who knows? Who knows? AR-15, when I was watching him at Florida, that man literally could not hit the side. Yeah, of no, the you ball. you were very, I've never very, seen anything very... Like in my life. When we, no, like, if you guys up, go... Shane, like, Steichen might genuinely be the go. If you guys I, like, go to our YouTube page and watch the live stream oh, of our draft, oh, yeah. if you watch the live stream of our draft, I drafted Anthony Richardson. I got him, I think, for a little bit cheaper. And Grant was like, he was like, I mean, good value, but like, I think he's going to be ass. Like, and yeah. wasn't, got hurt, but like, wasn't ass, was, was pretty efficient. Um, Literally after his first half in the NFL, I knew I was wrong. I was like, yeah. oh, very, very big miss. Yeah. When I saw very him drop large 20, miss. when I saw him drop 22 fantasy points that first game, I was like, very I'm, large miss. I am uh, so incredibly happy right now. Like this, you know, we maybe a little slight transition upcoming year looking at these next stages of quarterbacks. Like, J.J. McCarthy is a guy that, shit, I hate him. I absolutely hate J.J. McCarthy, okay? That's but that's a biased him. reasoning. Him. That's a biased yeah, yes. reasoning. But it's like, I am now trying to strip my bias here and just think of a potential, like, growth outlook here. And, like, I definitely think J.J. McCarthy has an extremely high NFL seat. I, like... I'm trying to not be biased here. Like, look at the passing numbers pre and post Connor Stallions. That that's a little concerning to me. And just look at his passing numbers, his first year starting. It's like he was not asked to do a lot. And I fear in the NFL these days, they are now asking so much out of their quarterbacks that wherever JJ goes, he's going to be asked a lot out of him. And I'm not sure if he's comfortable doing that yet. But I said the exact same thing about AR-15, and AR-15 essentially had half a season worth of experience before the NFL. AR-15 is the other counter though is Mitch Trubisky was built way similar, different. and Mitch Trubisky sucks. So, I, like Mitch, though, it, correct correct me if I'm wrong here. He was kind of hailed as that first quarterback to be taken that whole year. That was Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes year. Yeah, I, I I know that. I know. I think the, I think Deshaun but, like, Deshaun was. I I was very surprised like, that Deshaun ex- didn't go earlier than he did. To be honest, like who else? Oh, Clemson. Baker 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 went quarterback one that year. No, it wasn't. No. It wasn't that year. Baker was the Darnold Josh Rosen. Who? Uh, hold on. Josh what class Allier. was that? Twenty eighteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Was Mitch or sixteen? Baker Mayfield was, was 2018 to so 2017. 2017. Oh, oh, that was the year that the Browns picked Deshaun Kaiser to start to start their team. All right. Okay. Swag yeah, Kelly. Settled, Swag settled. Kelly was in that draft. Goat. Uh, uh, just won the, the goat, CFL. The goat, Frank Nathan Cup. Peterson, and the Pastronaut were both in that draft. C.J. Beathard, the only man uh, that that beat Aaron Rodgers and whatever streak that once was, I can't remember oh, yeah. what that clip was. Yeah, not the greatest though. Shit. Uh, uh, the but... the Davis Webb, the quarterback coach for I don't remember which NFL team, oh, yeah. but he is a quarterback coach now. Is it Giants? Did he go back to where Maybe. he played? Did he played Giants, correct? He did. Yes, he was right with the Giants. Yeah, Mitch was the first quarterback taken uh, that year. I'm and just then, trying to think of like this year. Caleb's the unanimous one. Like things have really changed. Like shit, going into the season, no one was putting Jaden Daniels top five. Drake May was widely considered to be like second quarter. He was second also one. He was considered one at one point as well. Yeah. Like before two years ago, before Caleb had started, because Drake May started as a freshman, they were like 2024. 20, Drake May number one pick. Then Caleb happened two years ago, and they're like, nah. Yeah. Like, ah. That guy's really good. Uh, but yeah. I would say though, looking at these quarterbacks, like I at first I was like, oh, JJ is Will Levis like last year. 
No, uh, it is not the same thing. I, I don't think it is the same thing there. Uh, I just wonder though, like those top four guys. There's also, there's shit, also a landing big... spot. I'm not even sure if we can look at that necessarily too much anymore. Seeing what CJ did. There, there's Obviously, just a big, there's just a big vibe feeling difference between uh, last year and two years ago where, you know, two years ago, there wasn't really consensus. Like it's the worst quarterback class for the last decade, two decades. Right, where it's Malik Willis, Matt Corral, Desmond Ritter, horrific, horrible. But there was people being like, "Yeah, my, Malik Webb is num- um, Malik Willis, number one quarterback in this year's class, going to be in the first round." I was like, "I think he could go in the end of the first round." But going from that vibe and what we heard about that, where like they were trying to boost his draft stock, being like, "Yeah, we saw Malik Willis like picking up trash for a stranger outside of the restaurant." Going oh, from that God, to like I Will Levis that. last year, where like. There weren't as many concerns, and people thought he'd go in the first round, but it was also like, okay, hey, after this, where the, where would he go? After these first couple, th- where would he go? Um, and people thought they might trade up for him. That never happened because it slid. So it's really, you know, there's a vibe difference, but also we don't know as much as everybody thinks that we know, and that's the whole thing. Is it's smoke and mirrors in the NFL draft. And this year, right, You don't. we don't have that vibe with J.J. McCarthy. We're not hearing those same things that we heard last year with Malik well, uh, Levis. Or Malik Le- Malik Levis. Levis. Will Levis or Malik Willis two years ago, right? We're not hearing those same things. Those similar things, that the closest player to that is like Bo Nix. That's the closest player. And Bo Nix in this situation, by the way, like could go second round. Like he's not going later than the Broncos pick in the second round. Like there's no way he goes later than pick 13 in the second round. Like, okay. it, but like with Bo Nix, I could see he could even be going in the first round. Somebody might trade back in to get him. Teams. Teams like you got to remember Raiders need a quarterback. Broncos need a quarterback. Like there are teams that need quarterbacks that are going to be in that middle of the pack. And once Michael Penix goes off the board, which he could go off the board early, mid or late, any of those three, once he's off the board, Bo Nix is the next quarterback. Let's talk about Michael right now because, uh, and we could also talk about the other Michael P Michael Pratt as well. Holy shit. We got two Michael P's, Uh, but big Phoenix energy. All right. We we've had our, our, our debates back and forth about him. Uh, I have a feeling that now this is what I was just kind of thinking. And it's a stupid comparison, dumb, easy debate comparison because they're lefties. But Michael Penix to Miami. You think they're going to waste a first round pick on Michael Penix? I'm just. By the thinking, way, probably would be no, better no, no, than no, no, two. No, 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 no. no. I'm, just, I'm just. No, no, I'm just literally playing around. Like, like where can Michael Penix just be? Ow, holy shit. And like. To be fair, that's I basically think, like, any quarterback with Miami, though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, that, that one is That's not a fair good. example. I'm thinking of some spots, like, is there a chance Michael, like, okay, Michael Penix hit the ground running day one. I, okay, you have Michael Penix and J.J. McCarthy on your team. I'm going to argue Michael Penix is going to be above J.J. day one. I, what I am curious, what I'm going to be curious, though, is if a team decides to go the Redskins route 2012, right? RG3 first round, Kirk Cousins fourth round. Will a team do a two quarterback stack this year with the players that they have? Like, could we see a, a, a team that drafts JJ McCarthy pick five or, or Drake Were May pick all three? All of the dogs on coaching staff when they did that, all of like the washington coaching staff with every uh, coach. yes were they all there yes okay so if that happens we're going to take a deep dive into whatever coaching staff that is and now project but I, i'm if they do that like i'm gonna be curious if if jane daniels give jane it's not gonna happen with caleb but jane daniels drake may jd mccarthy one of those right they drop that and then we see michael pratt jordan travis fuck not joe milton spencer rattler um one of those guys, right? We see that in the in the like the fourth, third, fourth round. Um, and that's just going to be interesting. That's just going to be interesting because you you, know, you never know. One of those guys might come over and take over, like Kirk Cousins did with RG three. Although you know uh, Jay Gruden kind of did fucking kill RG 3s career. That's a different story for another day. It's another day. Um, but. I don't know, like, like Michael Penix. Michael Penix is the weird situation here. It's the weird player where we know all this stuff about him, right? We know the injury history. We know the age. We know, like, this and that, right? But then we know other things where it's we see what he did this season. 
We saw, we know his accuracy, his throwing, but we know all that. We saw him run a four, four, six. Like we have all that, right? So it's going to be- I still just can't even believe, but- It's going to be curious. Like I'm curious where he's going to land because the range on him could be early first, mid first, late first, or second round. Like that's the range. Like, and that's going to be the range for every NFL team. Some teams have an early first. Some teams have a mid first grade. Some teams have a late first grade. Some teams have second round grades. Like it's, that's the thing is like, he could slide like Will Levis or some treat, some team might trade it. Like there's no consensus value of what Michael Penix is worth right now. Now, this is a name that I know nobody is bringing up right now. And I'm trying to think of maybe some type of guy that could do like a kind of kind of what Sam Howell did. Like I believe he was a fifth round pick. Yeah. Like wait a year, then ended up getting a, a starting spot. Like of these back half guys, and these are the names I'm about to mention. All right. Sam Hartman, Jordan Travis, and Keaton Slovis. Those are the three that I think maybe might have a chance, but what percent chance do you think of those three guys? Jordan anyway? Travis. Well, he's just number that, a, yeah. Jordan so Travis. I'm not saying rank the three, but, but I'm saying, but I'm saying, any of those no, I'll do both. For, I'll do both okay. for you. Okay. Jordan okay. Travis is n- the number one option out of that, no matter what. People forget that he's in this draft. And although, yes, he has some little slightly worse attributes as a quarterback compared to other guys, like a little bit of a weaker arm, right? A little. You know, he is athletic. He's coming off an injury. He's going to, he's falling because of that injury. But if he yeah. didn't get injured, he was going to be in Heisman conversation. So yeah, you have to, like, that's the player that you're getting at. Pre-injury. I have no idea. I, second I round, right? Maybe was... late first of a team, like second. Like he's that, he would be in that first section of quarterbacks just on the basis of he's not hurt. He's showing off like if he if he was in the Heisman final, if he was a Heisman final, because we don't know what would happen on the next couple of games. Right. And if they didn't make the playoff, if they make the playoffs, we don't know what happens because clearly his value was so detrimental to the team that the playoff committee decided that they weren't worth putting in the playoffs because of losing him. Like that's how detrimental he was. So we don't know. But Jordan Travis out of that selection is probably the number one option because he has the most potential. Right. After that, Sam Hartman and, uh, and Keenan Slovis are the two guys. It's interesting. Or not, not Hartman. Um, uh, oh, wait, shit. Yeah, Hartman. It is Hartman. Oh, my God. I honestly think Keenan Slovis probably is a little bit higher on team sports than Sam Hartman right now. And then yeah, Sam I mean, Hartman's I, class. Like, I mean, Keenan Slovis, I have a very strong opinion, obviously. I know you do. From USC. Like, that freshman year, Keenan Slovis, I was like, what? the fuck am i watching i he is so good and then it just i i've never seen a fall off like that for how good they were as a freshman like ever and he was not supposed to be the star of freshman year jt daniels was supposed to be the star towards acl time first game of the year against rice and then keaton took over that's ironic where he ended his career as rice that's that is wow i didn't know that that is wild it all it all comes back to square one, Everett. It all comes back to square one. That is wild. Uh, but yeah, like all those factors moving and stuff. Like I was really expecting it. Like like after that first year, people were saying twenty twenty three Keaton first round pick. Like because that would have been his junior year. That obviously didn't end up happening. Uh, but I I would say overall of those three guys, a chance of them getting to start and by start I'd say by next, not this season, next season. I kind of feel like eh, sub 5% chance, if even. What, like, one thing I think about, and I'm biased because I, I own him, but, or have him in Dynasty, but, uh, Hendon Hooker, would you, would you trade a fifth or like a fourth for Hendon Hooker now that I mean, he's I mean, I give up like a sixth. I, he, he, he's, you haven't seen him. You have the nothing lines from don't, him. No, yeah. No, he didn't I, play I, in the preseason. Like, you have no shit. film of him. Nothing. Yeah. So, and the Lions aren't going to give him up because he's a rookie contract backup right now. Like, you're not, that's just not what you do. And it's like, like, let's say he balls out in preseason. Like, yeah, you put him on the block, like the block, like low, it's a low key block. Like, you don't say he's on the trade block. But like, if somebody comes up to you, you're like, we'll give you a fifth for Hen and Hooker. You'd be like, sure, fuck it. And you'll go sign a backup. But I mean, like, that's the thing is when you have 
a premium. Like, I have no idea what Goff's situation is. But when you have a premium, I think he, he got an extension. When you when you have a premium backup, especially when on a rookie contract, like Hennon Hooker was fantastic in Tennessee until he tore his ACL. Yeah, you have to remember that. Like, oh, yeah, I'm looking at the not. Oh, dude, Hen- I've disgusting. So when you have a player like that that's over. shown that potential as your backup quarterback on a rookie contract, it's more, it's harder to part ways with them. This is the same thing with kind of like Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley has shown shown potential not as great potential but shown <laughs> showed potential with the ravens and that's why with a rookie contract they're like we want to keep him like teams were calling him but they wanted to keep him because you know he's a, he was a good backup uh and kirk cousins was the same way before he took over for rg3 obviously he ended up being the starter for the redskins like that you never you yeah, never yeah. know yeah. you never like, know hey i mean at the end of the day the most important position is quarterback and what's the second most important position ever at Backup quarterback. Backup quarterback. So you you have a you have a good point there. But like those uh, the the players with the most potential to be drafted this year and sit like not a first rounder, right? We're not talking about those starting six guys. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm talking sleeper. the the most potential to be like, hey, we're gonna start you in a year, maybe two. Depends on the team they go to. But Michael Pratt, P. Sizzle, all right. Spencer oh, yeah. Rattler. I'll, I'll be honest. I was. I was counting him up on like a day two pick and wasn't really throwing him in there. But like, I'm you have to look at it as not a a second round or not a first round pick, right? Yeah, like that's yeah. that's the way that you have like to look at it. Like not expect, not drafted because to be Sam the Howell guy. fell. Sam Howell fell, but originally he was projected to be the number one quarterback in that draft before, like the season before, and he was projected oh, to be like a first oh, round. Like that, Ask that was PFT, the whole time. He's like, hey, we we did have at one point the projected number one pick in the draft, so I mean, we kind of won, yeah. right? Like, so I mean. Michael Pratt, Spencer Rattler, Keenan Slovis, Jordan Travis. Those are probably those guys. Yeah, Hartman, Although, I do not think. Randomly, Hartman, though, Sam, Austin, what, what's the kid's name from Western Kentucky? Austin Reeves, I think is his name. That guy might randomly, like, I don't know. Western Kentucky hey, guys. Always, Ohio State this year. So I, <laughs> Western I Kentucky guys always find a way. And he, I believe, once again, because Western Kentucky is a massive passing offense, I think he also once again set, like, the highest passing yards in the uh, NCAA this year. Like, he might work his way into that, that as well. Yeah, that could be, like, the Bailey Zappi shit. No, <laughs> li- literally, it might be. It might be. And if he, it would be. Yeah, Austin Reed. Yeah, Reed, R-E-I-D, or Reeves. R E E D. Okay. Yeah. That guy, that guy is potentially in there. Like, you know, you, you never know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that like it'll be interesting. Like teams like the Broncos, the Raiders, uh, the Rams, um Saints, right? Those kinds of teams that are on the borderline between uh, needing quarterback this year, waiting to take one, whatever, right? And just needing quarterback in general, but they're later. It, they, those are the teams that will determine whether or not those guys are going to get a chance in a year because it's going to have to be one of those teams. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree there. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Giants, Giants are there too. Oh, yeah. But yeah, projecting future, like, eh. Oh, I could see the Titans saying quarterback like round five. Titans six, are not seven. taking a quarterback. They're riding with Will Levis this year. Oh, they are? They're riding with they're, a Le- Will Levis. They're this riding year. with Mayo. Ca- okay. Right. Maybe they take a guy late, but like there's not, yeah, they're not like, bringing, like, they're not bringing like a guy like, hey, like no, you're competing I'm not to saying start this year. draft Michael Pratt round <laughs> three and be like battle. Like, I'm not saying that. Oh, but if they drafted Michael Pratt, Michael Pratt will He'd be win starting. And take over. He uh, will be starting. Yeah, but I don't, I don't see a, a scenario where they draft quarterback there. Uh, I mean, there's a chance. Like, one thing I may have been playing around with, I'm slightly just thinking, how can Marv not fall to me at five? Do you think there's any chance that the Patriots take Marv at three, then take a quarterback in the second round? Any chance at all? Yes. I don't really see it. You think? Oh. I think that I think in general, there's a chance they don't draft a quarterback in the first two rounds at all. I think that there's a chance, like my whole thing, I made a TikTok on this and I was talking about like, Hey, like these are the draft scenarios for the Patriots. Right. And I went through and for me, as if I was a GM and people might be like, this is why you shouldn't fucking be a GM, GM, right? That's your opinion. But for me as a GM, if I'm developing a situation for a quarterback, a rookie quarterback to be put in, 
there's a balance between developing the other positions and then getting quarterback and then having a quarterback in general. The Texans did it perfectly where they had developed most of the positions around what the quarterback needed. They signed some guys, right? They built that. And then they put CJ in there and they didn't expect what, I don't know if they expected what to happen to happen, but that's what they did. Right. There's and other situations major though. Major gamble getting Will Anderson and it paid off. So yeah. I mean, and other situations though, like for me personally, it is more important to have those position groups at least somewhat developed around 100%. where you're going to put the quarterback in. Because if you put a quarterback 100%. in a situation where they're not, they have no options, right? It, it is Bears. not going to end well. Is Bears. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And even then, I think they had at one point, they, Anders. Alan Robinson, Darnell Mooney, like that was, and, and Byron Pringle, I think was their third option. Um, like, they tried, right? They tried. They, um, they had a top five run blocking wide receiver in the NFL and EQ St. Brown. So, yeah. So, so like, but if you don't have it developed, you, you know, you're not putting your quarterback in the best position to succeed in the career. And if you're, if your rookie quarterback's confidence tanks, then his whole career could tank, right? So if you're the oh, Patriots, yeah. where you have banning spot the, max, the Patriots' best player on offense is Ramondre Stevenson. That is it. Not Juju. Not Juju. I mean, they have KJ Osborne now, right? So here's the deal. If well, you're telling me- on the field the most. A quarterback the that they're going to draft is, let's say, Drake May, right? That's the quarterback that they're projected right now. Drake May is a very raw player. And look what happened this year when he played with less talent. His performance dropped statistically a decent amount from two years ago where he had more talent, right? Oh, yeah. He is reliant on those players. So if you stick him in a situation where he out. doesn't oh, have that, his career is going to fucking shit itself. He's going to not do well. And I don't know if the Patriots is going to want to sign him, but if you get Marv, a generational wide receiver, right? And you start building that offense, you're going to be shit this way anyway, and this year anyways, but Jacoby's a good quarterback. He's a good quarterback. And it's been, they said that they wanted to start a veteran anyways. So if you're going to do that, you could build that offense up, get a good pick next year, get a quarterback. There's going to be a decent amount of them next year. Not like this year, but there will be some next year and go from there. That's what yeah, I would I can't do. believe I'm saying that no more dynasty talk for me after this, but um, for my quarterback room, Jacoby Brissett is more valuable than Justin Fields, at least for the first two weeks of the season. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, he is. He is. But I, I think that there's a very good chance. Like if I'm, if I'm the Patriots right now, right. Marv is very, I I'm liking that a lot. Right. But like, let's say the Vikings are calling you, right? The Vikings are calling you and they're like, we'll give you 11, 23 and next year's first for your, for your number three overall. Right. I'm taking that because even though Marv matters to me, I can get my defensive help. I can get my offensive help. There's going to be wide receivers available. And next yeah, year I get like, an additional is first. Is Marv enough to fix everything? No. Next year I'm getting additional first where I can get my quarterback. I can package that and trade up to get a quarterback if I want. Like there's so many more options to do that than what you have going right now. And if Marv is worth it enough, then take Marv, right? Or if the Giants come calling at six, you trade back and get some more capital, you still get Malik Neighbors probably. Like, yeah. so at many course. options. Or you trade back again, you get Odunze. Like, so many options. So many options. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think, with, like, actually, from a charge perspective, I, I don't know exactly, but I feel like if Marv is gone at five, then we are so trading down. And, but for Marv to be gone at, five wait if i mean i don't know five, if malik neighbors is there you still might you I, have like, you need why i don't see underway. how they pass i don't but it's the chargers and then you're gonna draft you're gonna draft Joe wall yeah i'm expecting that to happen i'm expecting that to happen i'm not i i've played this game too many times i'm not doing it anymore uh, there's there's just no point there's no value the like the the potential outcome of being like, oh my God, I, I saw it, spoke it into existence versus the impending doom when it doesn't happen. Not, not worth it for me. All right. Not worth it for me. Uh, yeah, I know I mean, Marv is just. Ugh. Let's say the picks play out this way. Okay. Like, let's assume. Caleb one, Caleb one, two, Daniels. I think Daniels, I think Jaden Daniels I is going number two. Go Let's say number three is Drake May. All right, which is a yeah. doomsday situation for me. 
for you, Cardinals on the board. It's that's it gets my fear where Marv's going, of course. But here's the thing: like, that's where you, this is where know? it gets interesting. If Marv goes four, then five, you have Malik Neighbors, Joe Alt, or you trade, right? But the interesting thing is going to be: does somebody trade up four? Because your dream situation is all four quarterbacks go one, First two, three, four, four. Picks. and that's going to require a trade up. And like I said, my the yeah. best situation for for the Chargers is arguably that you don't even have to be faced with trading that option and contemplating. Because oh. if you, let's say in some situation, Marv is there, right? But J.J. McCarthy is also on the board. So you're contemplating, are you trading back or are you taking Marv, right? That's the worst situation for you because you legitimately have to have that contemplation between Marvin Harrison Jr. Because and now trading that back. number five pick is so valuable. It yeah, is, but at the mean. same time, at the same time, let's say Marv becomes better than Justin Jefferson. Let's say that he is literally Jerry Rice's fucking father. All right. Let's say that he's the second coming of, of, of Jesus playing wide receiver. All right. Let's say that that's the case. Okay. And you ended up trading that pick away so that somebody can, Oh, I will never be able to never be able to forgive yourself. But if you get to put in a position where the only option is Marv, like nobody wants, there's all the quarterbacks are gone. Right. You, that's that's just you only have one choice unless you take Joel, but one choice. Like I, you tell me, do you think I I maybe I I misheard you there a little, but like a scenario where Marv and JJ McCarthy are available at five for the Chargers. I, I wasn't saying that in the case that the okay. Chargers picked them, but I was saying that JJ fuck. McCarthy is available. That happened, like, but I'm saying JJ McCarthy is available because look, if JJ McCarthy is available. Giants are at, at six, right? At, at Giants four? are at six. No, I'm saying at five. JJ is available at five. Let's say Marv. Okay. Marv, Marv, Marv is still there. Marv is available. The Cardinals Both didn't pick him, all right? He falls. Okay. okay? He falls to five. Somehow JJ Cardinals... McCarthy somehow falls to five, too, all right? So now there's Marvin JJ it. McCarthy. The Giants are there at six. Every It's known. Michael Giants Panics might draft a quarterback. Four. But it's known. Giants, Giants want a quarterback, right? Then you have the Vikings panicking, ring, ring, hello. Yeah. Fuck, we need to get up to go get JJ. You contemplate that or you draft Marv. That's a, a no, hard that's debate horrifying. because it's, it is, do you go with the wide receiver or do you go with potential future? And if one of them misses, you are going to be ridiculed for that for the rest of your life. You're the rest of your career. And if you're a Chargers fan, you're going to fucking, they charge themselves. They, they shit their pants. Like, that's this just what happened. We were speaking about earlier, like, do you have all the pieces to win a Super Bowl? Do you actually have all the pieces? And when I look at the Chargers, if we added just Marv, do we have a Super Bowl team? Now, as a Chargers fan, I know the answer is no. But as a brainwashed New Age Chargers fan with hard volume, I'm thinking like, oh, he can fix it immediately. Like at the end of the day, the answer is probably no. But Marv is that good that even if you don't compete year one with Marv, you're two, three, four, five, six. Like that's where I'm thinking a little bit here. Where shit, even if Marv, even if it may, it may make sense to trade down, get more assets. It is a Marvin Harrison Jr. that we're talking about here, and they do not come around very. Uh, no. So I don't know. And hey, I'll, getting rid of Mike and Keenan, I was like, okay, what are we talking about? Obviously, they're taking a receiver at five, but it's like, but we are the Chargers, Grant. Don't be stupid. Remember who you are. So I, I can't, I, I can't, uh, like, logistically, if this team was any other franchise, they're obviously taking a wide receiver, but we aren't any other franchise. So I, fuck, I'm, I'm in a pickle right now. Uh, I, I don't know what to think. I don't know in what situation, though. I don't I'm know what situation you'd ever have to face having JJ McCarthy and Marv both available so a yeah, trade up. There's just I don't no I, there's way. just I don't know unless the Cardinals surprise people and they take neighbors ahead cuz some teams do have neighbors valued ahead, right? Which is possible. Hey, maybe it's possible. even the Chargers do. Like I don't know. I'm going to be honest, I, I doubt it. But and but, I think there's a good amount of teams that got Odunze over neighbors. I do. You have Odunze above neighbors. I don't. You but just said I do, hearing... so I was no, assuming. No, 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 my bad, my bad. I was, I've been hearing a lot. I think neighbors, and I think neighbors. I don't think there's, I think there is a gap between him and Marv, but let's say the gap between neighbors and Odunze and the rest 
is larger than the gap between Marv and Neighbors, in my opinion. That's what I think. I think Neighbors is real. Yeah, I mean, the the biggest thing, I, I doubt there's a trade before, at least for one of those top five picks, I doubt there's a trade before the draft itself. But, but the, the, the key is going to be Bears are taking Caleb. Washington is sticking with with a quarterback. It sounds like that, you know, that's their plan. Uh, we haven't heard any new news about them wanting to trade since a couple, like about a month and a half ago, right? The thing that's going to be a variable is the Patriots. The Patriots have a lot of different op- options as they've consistently been reported to be talking about making the trades and be interested in trading away their pick. Like I said, it's going to be, they have, they have to fully rebuild the whole offense and the whole team really like it's, it is a new era, new generation of the Patriots football. They have a lot of work to do. So the question is going to be, what do they do to do that? Do they start with a quarterback now? Do they want to build other positions? Like what do you do? Right. And that's that nobody knows that outside of the GM and the head coach for the Patriots right now, and probably Robert Kraft. So I'm just it, that's playing. gonna that is what once it comes to the number three pick that determines the entirety of the rest of the draft and that's why absolutely no mock drafts are going to be correct absolutely no advice is going to be correct and no opinions right now are going to be correct on anything related to the NFL draft where people think that players are going to go the rankings teams have on players etc so anybody that you see having hey you know XYZ quarterbacks are going to go off the board and XYZ way. No idea. And on top of that, we don't even know if if the, the commanders want Jaden Daniels. My expectation is they do, but they could go. With, we heard J.J. McCarthy, yeah. which is not I'm just, as plausible. Drake May I'm is an option there. Yeah. And a wild card and Michael Penix going early, which is, I think, like plus 10,000 odds. Yeah. But, hey, you don't want to rule any of that out. Yeah, like I'm just playing around in my head right now. But from what I've heard a lot, like Patriots really like Jaden Daniels a lot. Yeah, and, and it makes sense with Cliff Kingsbury me, being their OC. Like, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I'm Part of me also is thinking, though, that let's say you're the Patriots, and let's say Jaden Daniels is that pick at three. Like, if available, we're drafting Jaden Daniels at three. Let's say Jaden Daniels goes two, and then then now the, now the Pats call you up, Everett, and they're like, yeah, so that, that trade we had on the – you want to you wanna send that through? I, I wonder if maybe that second pick determines the tricks. It, like, which quarterback goes second may... No, that, up- that, that does fully determine everything. But, like, he, the, everybody's also talking about the Vikings and the Giants being those two teams, more so the Vikings than anybody else being the team to trade up. Like, it is well, well, well documented that the, the Vikings want to get up to the top, yeah. in the top five, top three, right? The one thing that the nobody is talking about is how, how one, desperate so. the Broncos are to get a quarterback. Their starting quarterback brand is Jared Stidham. Their second oh, quarterback yeah, is Ben DiNucci. So, and hey, as a Chargers fan, I hope it stays that way. So, but. like I, I have said, I think a great fit for them would be if what they picks do they have then? thirteen. That's their first round pick. I don't know what okay, they have. They in the still second have round. that. Okay, I don't know if they even have a second round. But like, if I'm if I'm the Broncos right now, like a great fit to me for the Broncos would be trading down and getting Bo Nix. But I'm biased, so let's play in the direction where they don't do that. I let's say no that they go trade up, right? Like, what they need to do is the package needs to be irresistible, like more than the Vikings willing to give up two firsts this year and a first next year. The the Broncos year to they have their first, third, a fourth. The, the Broncos fifths, to make two, to make one of those teams. Like you tell me as a Chargers fan, right? If the Broncos come to you and they're like, "Hey, I'll give you a first this year, our first next year, Patrick Sertain, and a, like a third. Wow, so over two firsts there. this year, oh, over two firsts this year. And a first next year. I, I don't think they would possibly give us certain, but like, oh my God. No, I think what well, I'm just saying that they like, would? that is oh. that is the max value. If you are if you are that desperate for a quarterback, you're the Broncos and you're rebuilding this team, right? They have shown that they don't care about retaining talent on defense because they had that top <laughs> five defense two years ago. Then Sean Payton came in and they let the most of those guys go, right? So yeah. Like if you're desperate and they don't want to start Jared Stidham, let Simmons walk and shit. Thank but God, I'm saying that's know. that is the option. Like that's that, that's what happens. And let's say that's what the, they do and they trade up, right? The Broncos snipe ahead of the, the Vikings and they get that top pick. Now also the whole draft's out of order because the Vikings at 11 23, do they yeah. still trade up to get a quarterback? Do they sit there? Do they trade away? Like they don't know what they're doing. The Giants don't know what they're doing. So th- this draft is completely unknown. We there we have no yeah. idea what the fuck is going on. 
yeah, this is it's it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a great one. It's it's fun being both of us being involved at the top. It, it is very fun, of course. Literally a year after we both made the playoffs, but whatever. Here we are. Uh, it's gonna be an interesting an interesting draft. I I am expecting the worst uh, out of my Chargers if Marv is somehow in Los Angeles. Uh, I say somehow. That's the first. That's the you're immediately buying that jersey. Oh my god, zero hesitation. Z- you will zero. you will buy the most expensive version of that jersey. Like, I'm talking replica. You know, like frame. We're framing it. I'm not wearing. You that. are you are finding I'm out how to it buy it from somebody that's not fanatics. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, I mean, before we wrap it up, I'm just hearing now that pendulum is switching back a little bit, uh, and people are like, you know, I know fanatics. You know, they were. You know, very involved uh, in these changes, but at the end of the day, uh, let's just look at all professional sports jerseys under Nike over the past like eight. Oh, horrible! All decade horrible. or so since they've like took over every sport. Nike's done an awful job. No, oh, yeah, it, job. it is horrible. And the only reason why, by the way, Nike has that monopoly is because they just outbid everybody. Yeah. They outbid Reebok. Yeah. They outbid Adidas. They outbid. I think the MLB had like a third party. Um, like really small brand doing their jerseys in the I remember 2000s. like Adidas NBA jerseys were sick. Yeah, they were they great. Were Reebok, Reebok, the old Reebok NFL jerseys were fantastic. They, they were those the, were the, the mesh ones. Sleeves, I love that. Those Absolutely were the mesh ones. That. And NHL, by the way, NHL ha- probably has the best quality jerseys out of all sports right now. Are they Nike now too? Their Adidas, they're Look. going to be Nike next year. So if you want an NHL jersey, now is now. the time to buy it. Buy it now right before now. before <laughs> Fanatics and Nike take over. Uh, but with that, thank you guys so much for watching, listening, raise five stars. You can find us on Spotify, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, and on Instagram at Waterway Pod. Follow me and Grant on Twitter at Everett Takes and at Waterboy Grant. We post new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube and all podcast platforms. So make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss a single episode. We post new TikToks every Tuesday to Sunday. Uh, so make sure to check us out there for some exclusive content. We post on Instagram as well. Uh, so make sure to check us out there. And we'll see you guys in next week's episode on Tuesday. Waterboys out.